Pez Anserinus or Pez Anserinus. Who knows how you're supposed to pronounce it. Uh, the goose's foot, Latin for the foot of the goose. Um, it's, 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 about, it's about here. What does it refer to? What are the muscles, the tendons that attach here? What other structures are nearby? Let's talk about the bursa. Why do we get pain here as a result? Uh, the anatomy of Pez and Serenus. There are three muscles. Okay, that's, that's Pez and Serenus there. That's the goose's foot. There are three muscles that insert into the tibia here. Uh, the tibia being the, the big bone of the lower limb, also your shin bone. The fibula is the little slender pin. The tibia is the big one. And we are medial, so we're on the inside of the just a little bit distal to the knee of the tibia. And the muscles that we find here are three muscles. Uh, here's the anterior thigh, here's the knee. This muscle here is sartorius, the tailor's muscle runs look from lateral to medial. And then here, this is gracilis. This is one of the adductor muscles. And then back here, this is the posterior compartment of the thigh. These are the hamstrings. These flex the knee. And here we have two muscles. We have semitendinosus and semimembranosus. The two semis go together to make a whole semitendinosus also inserts here. So the three muscles that insert into the medial tibia, just distal to the knee, at this common insertion point, making a thing that kind of looks like the foot of a goose, are uh, sartorius gracilis semitendinosus. Now sartorius, crosses the hip and the knee. Uh, so at the hip, it will help with rotation of the femur. And at the knee, it will help with flexion. So flexion of the knee. Whereas gracilis runs across the, the medial hip and knee. And that will then from an abducted position, bring the lower limb back to an adducted position. So very important in stabilization of the knee and stabilization of the hip, particularly of the person over the hip. And then the hamstrings also cross from the pelvis across the hip joint and across the knee joint. So they're important in extension of the hip joint and flexion of the knee. So semitendinosus does that. What else is nearby? Well, here's the knee. Uh, there's the fibula, so that's lateral. Here's the tibia, so that's medial. And the knee is supported by a number of ligaments. And here we can see the medial collateral ligament of the knee. And look, that is attaching to the tibia right where pes and serenus is also attaching. So pes and serenus is lying over the medial collateral ligament of the knee. I talk about this because we talk about the pes and serenus when we talk about medial knee pain. Okay, now these three muscles, they're big muscles, they're muscles of the lower limb. So they're very strong, they can generate a lot of power, they have to lift our whole body weight, well, kind of, they work together, they stabilize us, you know what I mean. They're important big muscles. And I said that, the tendon of semitendinosus lies upon semimembranosus. And whenever we have uh, tendons running over one another, it would be really nice if we had some sort of uh, low friction structure in between them so that they could slide nice and easily over one another. And we do. We have the anserine bursa here, or the bursa of pes anserinus. Um, the joints of the body, the synovial joints, uh, the bony ends are covered in articular cartilage, which is nice and slippery and gives you a nice friction-free movement. And then that joint is enclosed by a membrane, a connective tissue membrane that makes a little bit of fluid, synovial fluid. So that synovial fluid is secreted inside the joint capsule onto those articulating surfaces and the joints move lovely and freely, right? Uh, a bursa is the same sort of structure. A bursa is that synovial membrane, but it's making an enclosed sac. 
and inside that sac is a little bit of synovial fluid. You'll see it in the books, kind of looks like a bit of a bubble, but in fact, it's, um, it's flat. You know, there's, there's two flat surfaces that lie against one another with a little bit of synovial fluid in there, and it gives this beautiful friction-free separation between tendons that run over the top of one another. So that allows these tendons to slide and move easily. Well, when it's working normally, it does. The bursa could be damaged by trauma, by a direct blow, but it's more likely to be damaged like many connective tissues through overuse, sporting injuries, uh, lots of running, uh, lots of breaststroke, lots of cycling, lots of walking, you know, usually something like uh, suddenly increasing your mileage or increasing your load or running on uneven surfaces. It can also be caused by a change in the biomechanical loading of this area, which means there might be a muscle tightness somewhere else. Could be as simple as your shoes are worn out. Um, it can also be caused by osteoarthritis around here. It can be caused by obesity, you know, overloading these connective tissues causes similar sorts of problems. But if the bursa, if the anserine bursa here between pes anserinus and semimembranosus becomes inflamed, it becomes injured, it becomes an itis, a bursitis, there will be localized tenderness. So this is why it's important to be mindful of where we are medially. Localized tenderness here, which means if you press it, it hurts. If you move these muscles, it can cause pain, uh, going upstairs, uh, doing exercise. You know, often if you go running, it might start off sore and then the pain goes away as everything kind of warms up and gets going and then hurts later. What can you do about it? Um, well, the usual, rest, ice, uh, try and get the inflammation down. If it is a, a sporting overuse injury, then you do need to adapt what you're doing to reduce the load on it. But I pointed out that also this overlies the medial collateral ligament of the knee. And also we have the tibia here. So while um, bursitis of the anserine bursa might be a cause of medial knee pain, there could be something else here. It could be the medial collateral ligament. There could be a stress fracture in the tibia. It's kind of one of those things that is, you know, if it goes on for a long period of time, it's worth getting checked out. Um, you can stretch these muscles to take the pressure off the area. And as I said, the biomechanics of the lower limb are interesting. So if there's a biomechanical imbalance somewhere else, it could end up overloading structures around here, causing inflammation of the bursa because of overuse. So maybe the biomechanical imbalance is somewhere else, you know. You can, well, this is where it's worth going to somebody that knows how to assess um, the lower limb and can work out where the imbalance is. I say lower limb, could be in the pelvis, could be in the back, and teach you how to lengthen the muscle, rebalance and fix the problem, right? But that's the anatomy of pes anserinus. Watch out, there's also one in the face. The facial nerve has one. Um, but pes anserinus in the leg is the, the tendons of sartorius, gracilis, semitendinosus coming together as a conjoined tendon, a joint tendon, to insert into the medial tibia five, six, seven ten, uh, centimeters distal to the knee joint. There is a bursa here. Inflammation of that bursa can cause medial knee pain. But there you go. See you next week. Mm -hmm.